a bit further. No, I'm catching this off. This is going to be the lid. This is going to be the top of the cup. So I've got to reverse everything yet. Which reminds me, if I'm going to reverse it. I need a tenon on this end, don't I? Candy camera yet? Am I? Oh. following on live stream I didn't know I was being live streamed this evening so good evening stop 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 there we go that's for that a bit later um 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 the cup. So this is the Ashley Isles half inch spindle roughing gouge. Used carefully, hello I've got a, a bit of torn away bark here this isn't going to be as pretty as I would have liked um, used carefully you can use it nearly as well as a spindle gouge I do grind the wings back slightly which you don't normally do on a sp spindle roughing gouge it just gives me a little bit more sweep and swing right we're looking for the cut This is all about shape. I should be able to get what I want out of that. I'm just going to put a skew, he said hopefully across the front. Square it up. Don't need to take it all the way to the centre because of course the centre's coming out to make the cup. Now the thing with turning a cup is you've got to do it equally from inside and outside at the same time. So I'm going to get a rough shape on the outside. Start to taper it in, taper it in. Come on, stop, 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 stop. 
they don't like stuck. It's actually being still being driven. Okay, we've lost some bark here. I now want to get this out of the way. Now we're going drilling. Probably will be in a moment anyway. Let's get rid of the tenon off this end. should always stop the lathe, except the slave hates stopping, before you move the tool post, unless you are very confident in what you're doing. Right, so I'm now going to drill the deck. The wings are over what's considered 10 o'clock, so if, that, if that's 9 o'clock, 10 o'clock, 11 o'clock, 12 o'clock. singing going on. Right. Stop. First of my homemade tools and we've gone through quite a lot of homemade stuff this evening. That's the depth I'm going to be taking the cup down to so we need something in the bottom. So that's the depth I'm looking for. I've got about an inch to go. I'm afraid the ladies want to have a chorus session. Right, okay, let's just show you something. These are some of my favourite things to have in the workshop. They're bamboo skewers for making barbecues, kebabs. When I'm teaching, they form an absolutely excellent spindle. Okay, so if I poke my finger in there and make a cup shape, people say when you cut, you cut downhill, you cut into the wood. It's not always true. I'm going to go in and I'm going to pull out and get a smoother cup. The reason being, there I've got a grain supported cup. So I'm, I'm coming from a shorter grain to a longer grain as I come out. If I try to cut inwards, I'm jagging all the way in as I catch the the, the fibres, yeah? So I'm going to put a grain supported cup, cut by going in and coming out. Sorry, push, uh, putting the tool in and cutting on the way out. I have a few more reds on this thing. in more of that moat later but let's get some of this hollowed out to start with.
Yeah, everything's vibrating. Hello, Pete. What brings you all the way down from Bristol? Sorry? Oh. is heavier metal and it will stop some of the tool squeal. on the lower wing through here. Very gentle up that one. Right, let's just see what we've got in here first. I can see me sticking my fingers in there before it stops eventually tonight because it just takes so long to wind down. And I, it seems to be driven because if I try to stop it it's not playing. I can feel it juddering through. Right, okay, fingers are your best depth gauges you can have. Um, got a bit more to take off here to make it the, 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 the natural edge a bit thinner. It's not too bad there, but it's got once taken down, and then it's, this is going to have to be tapered round again later. So let's keep going. I've got an idea where we're going now. curve cup scraper we get in there right. I'm up around about 1600 right I've got a negative rate scraper but I'm still going to trail it slightly I'm going to support it under my arm and on my fingers leave a little bit of thickness at the top because I've still got to put in a recess for the cup lid. at the base and it's getting a bit thick a bit soon oh. now one of the tricks I'll be showing you later is how I sound the inside of these things okay I'm not going in with a piece of sandpaper I'm going to use I'm going to use the lathe as a sanding machine. Right. Let's 
here we're doing. Okay, I'm a quarter inch short. Which isn't going to upset the price of fish. So that's the depth of my inner hole. I need to bring the cup round underneath that. We'll do that. Let's put the lip in. For the cup lid. Literally skew. And I'm just going to cup in. Bring it round so I get a flat base as well as a square edge. Using the skew as a double beveled scraper, I'm just going to ease that round and take the squareness out where I put the edge of the skew down. the little lip for the lid to sit on later. Right, let's come back to the outside. Oh, still got used to this lathe. Right, I'm going to drill a small hole in the bottom as a guide for the um, stem to sit in. So I've got to leave about that much for the bite base and then about that much I'd say let's just get rid of some of this wood I'm a great one if I don't want the wood get rid of it Be cutting it too thin yet because we've still got a little bit of wood to take away. Again, this is the Ashley Isles half inch red Sherwin roughing gouge. I'll take that out so I don't catch the wrong wing. Catch, catch. spindle gouge. Let's see if we can just thin some of this down. The top lip is just too much. Gentle swing in the body, not the tool. Most of my work is done with my body. Good, try not to show off. My preferred tool for this long, long sweep is the skew. At the same time, I recognise that a lot of people don't like the skew. And if I want people to have a go at what I'm doing, I've got to do it their way. Right, I've got a bulge there which I want to get rid of. bulge I'm not happy with. I know this is only a demonstration piece, it's not for sale, but I like to get it fairly right. When you look at it afterwards it will look better. Okay. 
Okay. When you're cutting across the bottom or top of, of something, always clear the wood you're not using, that you don't want. Get rid of it. If you're jammed between, um, let's just grab a skew for a second. So if you're trying to push a skew round um, the end of something and you've still got the live centre and a, 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 tam of, a tag of wood and you're being pushed against what you want, you're going to burnish it. You're going to burnish it so deep you are never going to abrade that out. Okay, So always get rid of what you don't want and then work on what you've got left. Having said, I'm going to do it with a spindle wrapping gouge, I now find myself with a skew in my hand. I don't know if you want to have a quick look at that. I've not been told I can't sand tonight. I've got lots of sanding equipment. I'll do some later to show some of the, the equipment I've got. Um, but it's actually tonight, I'm, it's more interesting how I do the spindle itself. As I'm being live streamed, but I can't hear anybody, I'm guessing there's nobody to ask questions. Forgive me if you've got a question. Uh, I'll try to find it if it's done later. If you put something in the text, I'll find it and I'll answer it if I can. jam chuck for the cup to sit on there so I can put a small 5 mil. he says let's get a 5 mil ready Pardon? You always put the stem on after. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, you, you, you try to turn something. Once you see how I'm doing it, yeah. you'll understand. I mean, I've got some Sapili for the stems tonight. Um, I like straight grained wood if I can get it. Uh, and I've run out, which is why I've got Sapili. I use black walnut for the stems. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I know where you're coming from. <coughs> it's it's. It's what I'm going to be doing with it in a minute, <laughs> and, and believe me, it's going to be different. I must admit, I didn't expect such a big crowd. I'm really impressed. <laughs> May I? Do you want to have a look, Pete? Or so that's not been sanded. It's not been. Uh, I've not done the outside with a skew, which would be my preference. It's not about the cup. It's about the stem tonight. And a bit. I don't want to 
touch one side and make sure I can see the other side and that's actually perfect first time. That doesn't happen every day of the week, does it? <coughs> Passing gouge, again, there it is. There's my line. Which as soon as I get into place I can't see, so darken it down a bit so I can see what we're doing. Right, this well, we're going to have lots of fun because it takes so long to stop and find out whether I've got the right size or not. Not yet. Also tells me I need to clear some more of this. Drill a small hole in the bottom, he said. Hopefully, that's all we need. That's a uh, a keyless chuck from an electric drill on inside is an SDS adapter and it just gives me a hand drill that I can play with and I've got a smaller one as well. If you want to It's a small keyless chuck that came with something. I don't remember what it was laying around in the workshop. When I made the big one, I had that, and I thought, well, that would be useful, so I made a small one as well. And then I've got below that, I've got pin vices. Right, yeah, you know, end yeah. jewelers pin vices yeah, yeah. Uh, for doing sort of everything from one and a half mil down. I'm a, by, by train, I'm an electronics engineer. My drill bits go down sort of 0.4 of a mil. <laughs> I've never found a use for it in woodwork, but... <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It, 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 it has got, i tell you what it is, it's got the hexagonal cut on the back, so it's something that goes in a, a, a screwdriver adapter. Right. This is going to be the lid. And again, I've got an unusual way of doing this.
sorry. Yeah, but what I'm looking for is that curve, okay? I'm looking for that curve, which I'm not far off. Finesse it slightly with the scraper. going to be a screw chuck to hold the lid while I turn the outside of the lid. So, can I have my smaller, thank you. Centre market. We are drilling through. That gives me somewhere for the finial to sit into, glue into at the end. And I think I've just made a complete mess of that. But I've got a feeling that's the wrong size for the screw. Yeah, but I've got a feeling bringing a, a number eight screw is not going to work. Yep. Damn. Okay. Plan two. We we'll use the. <laughs> <laughs> we we'll use this one. Right. One advantage of using this one, and I did see it as I was um taking it out is I've already got that hole that, that diameter set to drop in the top of the cup. quick scrape just to take any nicks and lumps out. There we go. Don't drill all this time, Brian. when it stops. Right.
And this is a little screw chuck. Literally, it's just a, a, a dome. And it holds the lid while I turn the outside. I'm going to put the live, uh, the, the, the live center, the tailpiece, back in for this. I know that, that diameter there fits into the recess in the cup. Again, this is just wood I don't want, so... Is Pete still in the Bristol Club? Orum? Oh, okay. He used to accuse me of... Know the curve of the jam uh, of the screw chuck underneath. So I'm following that round with my eye as a step up. Remembering as I get to the centre, I've got to remember there's a screw in there. Okay, I'm going to show you the first of my sanding jigs tonight. You've seen people, I'm quite sure, they stand there and they've got their abrasives and they're either held together with a bulldog clip or they're held together with um, something or they've all got numbers written on the back. Well, I, because I use block backed abrasive, I've got little sanding blocks. Each one has got the number on the back. That's too smooth to start at 120. Start at 240, 240 he said, that one down there. One joy of it being on the, the um, that's a spare piece just in case, I can use it right the way up to the edge. I've got to taper down one side so I can get into narrow gaps. Any flock back to braise if works. Two inch hook and loop is available off of the internet.
240. Three twenty. Just touch the edge slightly. Don't want to do too much. Four hundred. This is Abronet, but exactly the same. It's flock backed. And a little bit of six hundred. I'm not here to sand. I'm not here to. But I've got so many different sanding jigs, ways of sanding that help me do things faster. It's always worthwhile if I show you a few of them. There's the lid which fits in the cup. We'll make a finial for that later to fill the hole. Right, let's get to the exciting bit, the bit you're here for. And I'd better start off by showing you what I'm going to use. Who's got the Axminster 3 quarter 16 threaded live centre? Anyone seen it before? Yeah, okay. It's wonderful. Throw it away. <laughs> um, quite honestly, I don't know why they've done it. I'm sorry, Axminster. Um, yeah, you've got different tips that fit in, and they've got a slight taper. It's, I don't know which taper it is. It's one of the tapers. Um, it just fits in. And then you've got this bit. And this is purely so that you can rotate it and force the taper out. But the thread is 3 quarter 16. Right, this is my live center, threaded live center. Again, this is from an engineering company. It's a 3 quarter 16 live thread. The most useful thing you can ever have. You can do it with the Axminster one, just as easy as what I'm going to show you now, but this is the one I'll be using, so I'm going to demonstrate on this one. Right. So, that's a standard thread for which you can get a standard nut. These nuts are about 50p each. Okay. I was lucky enough to find a two Morse taper, three quarter 16 um, stub arbor. The company that sold it to me swears blind they've never sold them. However, the nuts are 50p each, you can get a bolt for £2.50. So if I put a nut on, another you need you need to cut the the bolt end off, the hex end off. You can now lock them together and put that in your headstock or in your, your chuck. And you can start playing. And all of a sudden, that 3 quarter 16 thread makes you, let's put it actually onto anything you want. So this is the one I use when I'm turning vases and I need to support the mouth of the vase. I've hollowed it, I can't remember what, something wanted to fit in there, I did that one time. When it all wears out, I'll just throw it away, keep the nut and make another one. This is my cup chuck. So this fits in the end of goblets. We might use this one later. Sometimes I use this when I'm doing finials. The point of the finial fits in there and I can work the rest of it. This one I use when I'm reversing platters onto a, um, a, a disc with uh, 
non-slip material on it and it just sits against it, it rotates like mad which keeps it pressed in place quietly. The most useful live centre you can get but nobody else thinks to go and buy some nuts and make all their own ends. No. I actually normally turn finials without. Okay, uh, That one actually I use if I make a mistake with a, a lace bobbin. If the end of the lace bobbin comes off I'll just put that in and that holds that end while I finish this end. But the most useful I want to use this one, so we will pass round, we will pass, where have I put it? I'm always putting things down and losing. Here we go. I'll take this off, we don't need this. There's your threaded live centre, three quarter sixteen. Uh, Western Supermare has got two. Nuts and bolt shops, one's actually called nuts and bolts, the other one's called tools and fixings. Yeah, you've got them all over the place. Most engineering type towns have got something like this. So you can go and buy the bits you need quite readily. That's a one inch force and a bit hole, chisel, chiseled out to make it a hexagonal, push the, the nut in, couple of drips of super glue, you're away. Yeah, it's just the centre of this one rotates. Okay, right, so the other difference is this one has got a six mil threaded in a hole at one end. Now what I'm about to do, any engineer will recognise, any lathe engineer will recognise for some reason, wood engineers, uh, wood engineers, turners don't do it. Six mil threaded bar, homemade wooden knob at the end. It's locked in. It's not coming out. Okay, no one about it's held by a Morse taper. It's not coming out. Onto the end of that I can put this is the Axminster mini chuck. Three quarter sixteen. Or this is the record mini chuck, three quarter sixteen. So I can put a chuck at the other end. I can now have a chuck at both ends of my work. A different chuck because I need a small Now here's where I say I'm limited to the distance between the length of the stem. Piece of peely. In fact, before we do that, no. Let's get that right to start with.
You look fascinated. Mm -hmm. Yes. <laughs> I'll let you have a look at this later. It's quite simple, really. I'm just going to... Sack the juggler. <laughs> just need to get the ends round so that I can hold them in the chucks more comfortably. Right, do you understand radial velocity? Okay, so if I've got a piece of string with a weight on it, one inch long, and it's called pi three, not one four, one two, etc. Okay, two times three times one is six. If I spin that piece of string once a second, that, that the weight on the end is going round six inches a second. Yeah, if it's a foot long, once a second it's going round six feet a second. If it's a yard long, it's going round six yards a second. But it's only going round once a second. So the thinner my wood, the faster I've got to make it rotate to get the same speed of the tool across the wood okay radial velocity so we're going to wind this up quite a lot now <laughs> it's in the chuck honest <laughs> <laughs> oh no, this is just <laughs> that's as fast as I can get this on this speed this belt set. That's eighteen hundred. Down there, sort of size. <coughs> Reverse it. Again, this one doesn't come down so far. No. should now be able to put all of that between two chucks. If I get one of my bamboo skewers again, as I wind this live centre in, it pushes the wood. What happens on thin wood? So I'm going to put it between two chucks. Now I'm not going to push it, I'm going to pull it. Put it under tension. So it's not going to bend when I turn it. He said hopefully. <laughs> it's always worked in the past. Right, so.
but we're no learn. Well, you just want to find another one. Okay. <laughs> 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 Do you know, Pete, you look at it. Is it going to go? Um, Back in one end, and back in the other end, and it does need to be tight. You make no bones about that. This has got um, teeth in it. Right, so if I now backwind that and lock it, the wood is under tension, not under pressure. And it should not move away from my tool. seen it move yet? Mark, I've got to email you. Anyone in the club locally? Can I introduce Mark Bennett, uh, Beckett? He's our new Southwest Area representative for the AWGB. I was, but I took over the secretary. Mark was good enough to take over as the area red. Right, now then I'm going to take this down to a six mil diameter so it matches the hole I made in the bottom of the cup. Doesn't need to be super long because I've not made it super start making it look like what we want it to look like. And I'm going to beg your forgiveness, but I'm a skew mechanic. Don't want that bit. I would say there. It doesn't matter doing what I'm about to do. A standard V cut would work, but I'll show you this anyway. When you make a V cut, the wood flares out either side. When you're cutting a pommel, if you want a dead square side, there's your line cut in to the side of the line and then with the square of the bevel parallel or tangential 
that shouldn't happen. Cut in and you'll get a square and all the burr out this side, okay? Right, so... This is the bit that sits just underneath the cup. Again, I'm using the spindle roughing gouge, the Ashley R's half inch. I don't work for Ashley R's, I hasten to add. Okay, I just happen to adore this tool. Because the evening is all about the stem, we are going to abrade the stem. It's not very big. Does anybody have any questions? No, then. That's as far as I can get at 1800. That's why it's not cutting. Start again. Yes. Yeah. I'd have it up close to 3,000. I mean, I could open it up and adjust everything, but I'll work with what's convenient. Yeah, look after yourself, sir. One eighty. The two forty that. I was trying to start the abrasion with. Three twenty. We'll leave it at that. Right. Now start tapering it down. I'm surprised there's no question, and I'll tell you what the question I expect is, that screw thread does up as a standard screw thread which rotates in the wrong way, why isn't it coming off? And the answer is because this piece of wood's pushing it back on. Now this depends on my nerves. In my own quiet workshop I can get this down to half the thickness of a pencil.
Before I worked out the holding it between two chucks technique, the first one I ever did, I did without the system. And trying to turn it, it's bowing up, and I'm trying to turn it while it's moving away from me, and I've got to hold it on the skew carefully. Again, the skew's not moving, I'm doing the moving. again. Uh, yes, it does actually form a flex. Oh, I've got a step there I don't like. Juddering like mad, I'm not worried, it's not flexing away from me. Right, I don't know how much further I can take it. This is pencil thin. It still seems okay at the moment. Flare out is where the the, the, um, the the foot of the cup is going. Yes, it does that. Yeah. I I could explain to you why, but I'm not sure you'd understand. that up a little bit. Yeah, you yourself. I've got a catch there I'm going to keep falling into. The only answer is to get rid of it. That's an uphill cut. Or rather, not a grain supported cut, as I mentioned right at the beginning. Right. So I now need to start thinking about taking this off so I can put, make a foot, put the stem in the foot, put the cup on the, this end. I can't finish this until the, the, the foot is made because I want to blend the two together. But we can. I'm not 
going to do that, yeah? Let's move that out of the way. He does take a very nice polish. I'm sanding straight up on top of my skew finish. It won't be perfect. But I normally get a reasonable finish off of a skew. Certainly good enough to start sort of 240 or finer. Wonderful. Now half the thickness of a pencil and no flex because it's under tension, not compression. Um yeah. I could with the right woods take that half that thickness again but it would not survive being handled and that's the problem um, I've got one of these at home that's a bit thinner than that made of black walnut and I'm the only one the wife's not allowed to touch it once dusted I get to do it and I only use one hand okay I pick it up with one hand and I put it down and it vibrates like mad so um, 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 um. this free now don't get over over worried about that end that's going to be finished in a minute I can get I can get no, I can get longer than I've done. Um, I'm trying to think how brave I've been. Probably half that length again. Right. Yeah. Because it doesn't flex. That's the whole system. If you want to just have a look, careful, it is heavy. Mm. It's just a tea nut in a piece of wood. I don't know how deep it goes, I don't know how long the thread is. I've never pushed it to the limits. Certainly enough to 
do what I want with it. Right, big, heavy scraper. center a bit more space down to rail Bowl gouges don't cut like that. <laughs> no, that's cross grade. Right, yeah. Okay. My scraper's got. I never sharpen this edge, but it, it's hollow ground, and literally, as long as, whereas normally you use a scraper in a trailing mode, yeah. this you drop below centre, otherwise that will get in the way, and literally you just push through with a point. And you get a square edge. You you can take off the, the, the squares. If it's big, I'd cut it into an octagon to start with. But then, literally, that's the fastest way I can take an edge off. Oh, I'm turning it around. Right, find the center again. Now we go to the bowl gouge. <laughs> I'm not watching the time. Can someone give me a... I've got to finish by seven, haven't I? I think we're just about on schedule for that. suits you. Just drop a little, little bead on. Oh, struggle with that bit. This is one of the difficulties not working with your own lathe. Something you don't think about doing, isn't always as easy. I'm not worried about this end and again I'm not worried that it what's the word I'm looking for it, it might flex This is purely now for support. Yeah. 
blend the two together. There is a joint line on there. There's something I don't like the look of at all, so we'll just go back to this view for a second. That's better. It can be hidden with a couple of V cuts, it can be hidden with a, a small bead. Can I bring that with me? This is a homemade beading tool I'll pass around in a minute. I use it when I'm doing lace bobbins. speed steel I've shaped one eighty yeah um no because it's high speed steel I I did it with um a, no, a, a diamond, a set of diamond needle files. Yeah, that's why it's not very deep. But I don't want it very deep because I'm working on very thin. No, it, it looks that way because it's wet. It's, believe me, it all came from the same, it came from a stair tread my friend gave me. That is still wet with the wax, whereas that has dried out somewhat. I 
I just need to make this hole a bounce deeper. I don't think I could cut half a mil off there. So there's the stem. Because we don't like this temperature, it's got so it's got so liquid. So there's the stem. I'm going to leave that there for a minute. We have got wet glue on it. I've lost it. <laughs> no, 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 no. This bit. That bit. That bit. Again, we're going to cut a tenon on one end, reverse it into the chuck, and we're going to make a figure. Classic Cindy draws the drop finial, teardrop finial, you know the one I mean? This is my big carbon steel skew. I call it my roughing out skew. I, when I'm doing what I'm doing, which is using it as a roughing out gouge, uh, I use the t toe, the point, the long point, and tuck in that end so that when I cut that way, the wood falls off as opposed to curls round. Right, I just need a. bit of something to fit in the chuck with a shoulder. These have got the gripper jaws in this end. It is a standard set of jaws, but I, I don't see them very often. I like them because I've got a choice of sizes to use. I don't think so. Um, this is a, a, a rip-off Vicmark chuck and um, the supernova, the record, jaws all fit it. So let's have the end of the teardrop there, the, the pattern, uh, the, the ornament there. Bottom of the teardrop. So that's going to be the length of my finial, okay?
Well, this all depends. on how I feel the wood's behaving. We're going for it. What I'm going to do is I'm going to cut the end clear. He says, and do this free handed. I'm hoping I can do it because I can't get the. If I'm not comfortable, I might just need to speed the lathe up, which I mean a short delay. No, if it goes wrong, I've got some spare. People say to me, how do you turn such fine finials? And the answer is twofold. Of course, the obvious one is practice. The second one is, it's tuppence worth of wood. Have a go, if it fails, throw it away, put another piece of wood in. the skew completely wrong here I'm holding it right up close it's supported under my forearm what I'm trying to do is just very gently cut three little lines in the top there which we've done right we said the bottom in fact, I might just stretch that out a bit thing with these finials is they've got to have the right curves. I know that sounds ridiculous to say, but if you look at a teardrop, it's not that shape. It's that shape. So it's got to have that long sweeping curve from the widest point call this a teardrop, some people call it an onion. I don't care what you call it, practice them. <laughs> so if I wasn't happy, if this was jiggling around at the moment, I would put the... somewhere around. support one end, okay, just to stop it vibrating, yep. Yeah. 
Um, yes, I do, by preference. You might break the first one or two, but say, it's pennies worth of wood. I find the biggest mistake wood turners make is they get a piece of wood, they get some time, they're going to make something. Stop. Go and practice something. say I'm a skew mechanic I do a lot of spindles staircases um, I'll pick up my big skew in a second I'll show you something there's a black line down both sides of my big skew for people online, I don't know if you can see that, there's a black line. And I use that when I'm demonstrating in clubs to explain that if you keep the cut at least one third below that black line, it will cut. If you allow it to creep up, it will flick over, it will act as a seesaw, a fulcrum, it will flick over and you'll get your dig in. So when you're practicing with your skew, and you must practice with your skew if you want to master it, Put a black line on, doesn't matter which way you're going, as long as you cut on the low side of the black line, it should hold. It's only when it creeps upwards it will dig in. Right, that one's a standing. No, two, four, two, one, AC. No. I've got lots of skews and they're all ground the same. I grind the big one first and then every, one, every other one gets done to that. That way if I've got to pick up a skew, swap, because I, I damage it or it gets blunt, uh, I haven't got to think about a different grind, it working differently. They're all the same for me. Supporting that with my thumb just to make sure it doesn't flex away. the next bit is going to be cut so thin I'm going to polish this piece now Right, so the next bit with the Sugi Blanc Blanc of Finial is to make this as small as possible. with the tool yet this is just rough shaping getting rid of bulk waste now we're cutting
and whereas this is, looks like a teardrop, this has got to fit the rule of three, the magic tri uh, ma triangle, magic, uh, sorry, magic number. So I want the narrowest point about two thirds the way up, one third the way down. We're saying 15 minutes to go. Yeah. Right, piece of 240. Three twenty. Go away. Polish. It will go the same colour. The difference is whether it's dry or wet. Pretend that didn't happen. Give me a minute. with anybody online. I've got a small mishap. going to slightly undercut that with the side get out the way that gets the side of the party tool
says lib. How long have I got? Ten. Ten. Right, I've still got a hole in the bottom. So, lays on. Hoping that's the right diameter. and an ounce long. One goblet on a very thin stem. 